you talked about, you know, microbial life kind of spreading, right? It could be like a, like a mold, but it mm -hmm. just little spores and little bits could be spread out. What is that? When you say that microbial, what is, what is it actually? So it would be um, the spores of bacteria, for instance, right? So there's plenty of spores on earth uh, of bacteria that can survive space and hard radiation. Mm. Right? Bacillus, there's a number of bacillus strains that have this ability. So, you know, it's if it's, you know, frozen and in vacuum and it could last an awful long time. And we already have instances of bacteria and other living things, you know, surviving hundreds of thousands of years and then being resurrected. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's not a big difference between a hundred thousand years and say 10 million or even a billion years, the time that it might take to go from one place to another. Um, you know, I mean, imagine uh, a large chunk of rock, like what Avi Loeb pointed out, the Uma Uma event, right. Uh, going from one solar system to another, you know, it just takes a little bit of that over time uh, to spread out into many different places, uh, around a galaxy or even around, you know, the universe, let's say, yeah, but there's some interesting evidence for it. Uh, and, and, uh, one of those bits of evidence is, uh, what's called the Moore's law of, uh, genetic complexity. You've all heard of Moore's law for semiconductors. It's a, you know, it's a made up law, but the idea is that for whatever reason, um, every, I don't know what it is, 10 years or five years, whatever the number is, uh, the complexity of the computer chips doubles, right? And the speed doubles. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're always, as you'll see if you read in the, in computer magazines, there's this, have we reached the end of Moore's law? Mm. You know, and then somebody discovers quantum computers, right? Uh, and so then, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's more just an observation of what happens. So somebody thought to look at the complexity of DNA and the regulatory uh, regions of DNA that are in many ways like a computer, right? These are the areas upstream of the uh, regions of the genes that encode the proteins, mm -hmm. the things that mm -hmm. you know, we are, and the enzymes that make us, et cetera. There are these regulatory regions, which if you're a computer scientist, you would look at and you would think of as the, as the actual code. Mm -hmm. um, of what's of what is of how a person is made. Um, okay, and now the complexity of that in let's say simple bacteria, it's 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 extremely simple, right? They're they don't have the kind of regulatory phenomenon that that we have. Okay. Um, but if you think of bacteria as a ancient uh, example of what our great 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 grandparents might look like. Right. And then you look and you go up the chain of um, evolution from bacteria to eukaryotes to multicellular things, et cetera, up the chain. And you call those and you call that evolution. Right. right? That's all we really have to see right now. Um, and then you look at and then you basically say, well, bacteria evolved, I don't know, uh, two billion years ago, whatever the number is. These are the ones this. So you, you create that timeline and then you give some measure of complexity. It turns out that the complexity uh, of when things actually started was about 10 billion years ago. Billion or million? Billion, billion, billion. billion. Okay. But how long has the earth been around? Four billion years. Four billion. Exactly. Right. Okay. So there's a six billion year gap. Uh -huh. um, so basically... There's two answers to that. The first answer is it actually evolved that long ago. Right. Right. Six billion years ago. Or something about evolution took a fast leap up and then became the straight line. Yeah. I'm really curious right. about that up part. So, so it, it's either if, if life on Earth happened and, uh, and instantiated only four billion years ago. Mm hmm fast leap up and then became this linear curve. Mm -hmm. um, and that's perfectly possible. Um, or you could say it started somewhere else and just traveled here. Right. Okay. And so um, that's the first one. I find that interesting. 
Uh, the second one is a paper, and and that, that actually is a paper, and then uh, peer reviewed. And there's another peer reviewed paper called the Wow Signal in the Genetic Code by a couple of mathematicians from I think Uzbekistan. Hmm. Uh, and I don't pretend to understand the math, and I'm sure there's some statisticians that would argue with it. But their concept was interesting. Hmm. The um, the com- the actual what we call the genetic code the the uh, transfer RNAs that basically say, you know, a proline goes here, a leucine goes there, that allow for the um, proteins to be made. Mm -hmm. Um, They are so well organized Mm -hmm. in terms of the structure of the, of who codes for what, um, that it looks like it was designed, right? And then they go through some mathematical models of why it had to have been designed. And, you know, there's some caveats that I'll mention at the end here, uh, that uh, the chance of it not having been designed is like one in several hundred trillion. Right. Right. And what they're saying is the wow message. So you've heard of this thing called the wow message that when somebody first thought that they heard a radio signal from another civilization, they said, wow, they wrote wow on it. And that became the wow signal. So they said, look, the signal is actually in our DNA. The fact that the that DNA was planned and organized is right there in front of us. That's the wow signal. Huh. Now, you know, there's um, there's a guy who wrote uh, a book called The Selfish Gene. Uh, and um, his name is Richard Dawkins, a famous profess- genetics professor from England who basically says, look, that's rubbish, not this wow signal itself, but, you know, the whole notion of divine intervention or planned genetics that, you know, the creationists, it's rubbish because there are other mathematical principles that you can throw at this that say that you don't need that, you know, and, and I think this guy is fantastic, right? So, his is a fantastic counter argument to the wow signal, but it isn't the disproof, right? Saying, saying that there is an alternate explanation isn't proof of the alternate explanation, right? It's like, that's the, it's, so it's still in limbo, right? As to what it, whether this wow signal is true or not, even if it's not true, the fact that the DNA code is so organized in and of itself is beautiful. I mean, as a scientist, I, I, I appreciate the, the beauty of that, right? They, they, it's so well organized. And I mean, but we can look at any ecosystem and say it's so well organized, somebody must have invented it. No, no, you don't have to invent it. Richard Dawkins shows how things can evolve. So what about, I mean, this makes me start thinking about fractals and energy and patterns and recurring patterns in nature. And I mean, do you, what about that? What about just patterns of energy showing up on a micro and a macro level? Mm -hmm. What about that? Well, I mean, yeah. So the universe is organized with a pattern, right? If you look right down at the laws that we think are running the universe, all of these particles with features and capabilities uh, and how they will interact um, that allow for us. Basically, it says that embedded in the structure of the universe is the capability to produce us. Now, the question, the open question is, did somebody create the universe so that something like us could occur? Mm -hmm. Right? Or is it just chance and we're lucky? Mm -hmm. Right? Right? So there's this concept in the multiverse ideas of that the in other universes the laws of physics might be different right that if you take the various what we call constants of physics planck constant etc as all these Mm -hmm. you know various numbers and you change them only slightly uh any one of them only slightly suddenly you don't have a universe like ours that could even have protons right that it would basically you you wouldn't get anything. It would just remain a big mist. Mm-hmm. That could ever coalesce into anything, 
So there's this notion of what's called the anthropic, I think it's called the anthropic principle, that we only think of ourselves as the only universe that is because the laws are such that we can see ourselves. Right. But in the other universes, no one could become. I mean, if you were to go there, you would basically just explode. <laughs> you, know, you would just dissipate into nothing. Right. Right. right? So, so embedded in the laws of the universe are the rules that allow for evolution. Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't mean that they were, the universe was created for that. It's just that retrospectively, it is that. There's a science fiction book that I always remember a story um, about this thing that evolved in an ocean on another planet. And it, and, the, and the, it began with, it could not remember, but could deduce its origins, right? So we can't remember our origins, but we can deduce them. Sure. We can sure. deduce the kinds of things that must have happened. Mm -hmm. And then we can even go beyond that now, as I'm saying about the structure of the universe, to say that the structure of the universe allows for atoms. It allows for molecules. Those molecules can come together. And if they can reproduce, they will. That's the essence of the selfish gene from Richard Dawkins, is that if given resources and you can reproduce, you will find a way to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't need to imagine a god right that created you right but exactly. you know it's it and and he goes through a lot of very good <clears throat> arguments about it but but so that's the kind of way that i i think of it that it says that if we came from a panspermic event i'm not sure that's a word but just made it up uh, then that means that there are other potentially seeded planets elsewhere must that also could have Right. You know, created civilizations. Now, and then if you go as far as saying that um, there are other universes. Exactly. Which have, let's say, different timelines. Once you propose that another universe can happen and it might have a different timeline than ours. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it, it, the time, it, there's no such thing as, the, as a common timeline at that point. You're independent. You can come from any point in another universe's timeline. And if you are sufficiently advanced, you might have learned ways to jump between universes. Mm 